Just a quick demo video on this Grizzly G0704 CNC mill. Um, I didn't take the time to clean it up for beauty photos because I'm actually still using it. I'm going to be using it a little bit more uh, for the next couple weeks um, up until it sells. And I figure you guys don't want to see pictures of it nice and clean uh, you want to see a video of this thing actually working so you know that you're getting a working machine so just to give you some highlights it has a wood pan a chip enclosure the enclosure itself is fairly simple it's just made out of this coroplast material it does have a um, polycarbonate window to protect the operator from anything flying out at you if you're standing in front of it. Um, it will come with the tool steel Saunders Machine Works fixture plate. This is a special request and probably one of one on this. Uh, this was a $800 plate. It'll come with the plate and all the plugs. It will not come with the mod vise. It will not come with any vices or fixturing and it will not come with any of the TTS tool holders because I'm keeping those for my new mill. But what you are getting is a machine that is converted with large, I believe those are 906 ounce on the X and Y NEMA 34 stepper motors and a 1200 ounce on the Z axis. And um, it has flood coolant integrated into the faceplate here. You've got valves for nozzles. It has uh, mist coolant. However, this mist coolant hose internally ruptured because I was feeding it too much air pressure and I plugged off the end. So you will need to replace this hose. Um, these are like 20 bucks, but I'm gonna leave it installed just so you have an idea for routing. It has integrated air blast nozzles that are controlled with M codes or you can hit a button actually on the control or you could do timed air blast where it's going to blast every three seconds blast every 10 seconds or blast every 30 seconds it does have a custom, unique, four-tool position tilting rack ATC. I was intending to build a fixed four-position rack for this side. The idea of the tilting rack is you don't lose any of your access or travel. So that's the intention there. Uh, if you needed to have more than four tools, you could build a fixed side. You'll lose some of the travel, but you just don't have enough room in the enclosure for the overhang of something like this. But the tool changer works really well. It has a manual release button up here and it releases through CNC control for automatic tool changing. The catch is if you have more than four tools, you can't run it uh, with the tool changer. You have to limit yourself to four tools. Otherwise, there's a duplicate uh, version of Mach 3 that's set up for single tool changes. I'm going to try to see if I can integrate before I sell it a way to run more than four tools. But the option to run more than four tools I never got around to, but I have the plans drawn up which I can share uh, for more fingers and for a rack that will mount on this side, give you four extra tools. And it's really easy to program into this. Um, so what we have is a pneumatic power draw bar. Now this is only a two stage. It does require about 120 PSI minimum, which means that's where you're going to set your regulator. You're going to need an air compressor that goes up to 150 PSI. So I did this to save weight, save money, because I had a 150 P PSI air compressor. If you have a air compressor that's got a max of 125, your pressure is going to drop too low before it kicks back on. It's not going to work properly. The other thing that's really unique about this mill is the spindle motor here is actually a CNC milling spindle. It's a 2.2 kilowatt, so it is a three horsepower. But I made a custom pulley setup where it actually drives the Grizzly spindle. Now the Grizzly spindle is fitted with high quality 
angular contact bearings and when the mill sells I will give you a full reference chart of all the parts that I know uh, that are in this thing so you can have replacements this spindle has not acted up since I repacked it and it's probably been run for a couple hundred hours and it's still running very smooth very quiet does not heat up the spindle motor being water cooled you can run it all day long it does not overheat does not heat up so some extra chip management functionality there's a wash down hose system that uses the same pump for the flood coolant there's a valve on the back of the machine you switch over allows you to use the wash down hose to wash down the enclosure all of your chips go down into this hole this hole is into a bin that has a screen at the bottom of it you lift this bin out and dump it below that bin is the tote that's filled with your coolant and there's holes and the coolant pumps inside of here so it automatically filters out the coolant sifts out the chips makes it really easy for chip separation another major function of this mill uh, Grizzly G0704 is not known for rigidity a big chunk of aluminum back there is filled with an epoxy granite mixture is bolted to the back of the column significantly cut down on chatter added rigidity the column or I'm sorry the head for the mill is extended out as well as the travels on the mill so right now um, give me one second we're looking at 18 inches in the X you can go to 8.2 in the Y I have it set at a maximum soft limit of 8 inch and then in the Z um, you have depending on tool length at least 10 inches of clearance so that's pretty much it for the hardware um, the mill will come with a TTS style touch probe it's wired there's a port back there that it plugs into I'll probably toss in just a couple of TTS tool holders that I have that aren't cut for a tool changer because they do me no good on my other mill um, but like I said I'm keeping everything else so we're gonna demo something here really quickly uh, let's see you've got a VFD that you need a uh, 220 volt single phase uh, 20 amp circuit the rest of the mill the control the computer everything else just standard 110 volt power uh, you do have a, a pendant I don't really use it I just jog around using the keyboard and um, I'm trying to think of anything else oh um, speeds so minimum speed on the mill I do all aluminum but low speed and it still has torque for to small tools and drilling is 1540 rpm so. and maximum speed is about 7700 rpm which I do run this machine above 7000 rpm quite often Spindle's nice and quiet, it's no vibrations that are, uh, you know, disconcerting. Everything is pretty well balanced. I wouldn't run it any faster than what I have it at, but it definitely has no problem going to the max. So that's um, 7700 right there. And I had warmed the spindle up prior to starting this video. I'm going to let it kind of idle down here before I shut it off. Alright, so probing really neat setup I've got a probing menu here 
you can automatically probe any of the positions on a square rectangle or a circle um, and then this probes for your Z so you can set up your uh, work coordinate system very easily through that menu um, and then we have actually through the other menu the tool changer menu again it's all done through M codes through your um, through your programming I'll have a fusion 360 pro, uh, post processor that set up for using this mill but ATC right now um, we've got slot one tool three we actually don't have that loaded into the into the mill right now because it's been powered down for some time right now I actually have a slot tool or a slot two tool five in there so I'm just gonna correct that so that's what's loaded in but if I wanted to change let's say I wanted to pick up this tool right here Same thing, I just want to go to tool slot number three. That air blast is just to clear any chips that may have accumulated over the top of the tool. And again, I use the air blast. I put air blast commands into my machining operations with the intervals like blast every 10 seconds just to help with additional chip clearing. So that works really well. Um, let me go ahead and get you guys a shot of the back of the machine. Just to give you guys an idea of what's going on in the back end of the machine, this is your control cabinet. So I've got a high quality power supply, high quality stepper drivers. Um, it is a CNC for PC, I believe it's a C11 breakout board. Gosh, I built that so long ago. But then it does run through an ethernet smooth stepper with an expansion board. So you hook up to the PC for Ethernet, gives you a really fast, uh, reliable control over the machine. There's an additional relay board in there that controls all the outputs for things like the air blast and the tool changer. So moving along backside here, this box right here hooks up to the uh, control box. This is for all your limit switches control. Here's the stepper motor for the y-axis sticking out through the back. There's the filtration system for the coolant pump. Uh, keeps the fine chips out of the coolant. Shut off valve. You'd actually shut this off, but then still engage the coolant by just uh, turning on the flood coolant on the screen on mock. And then that would allow you to use the wash down hose. So if you did want to do mist coolant, you're going to need a separate reservoir. Um, I usually just, you know, set a cup right here full of the coolant if I ever do anything mist coolant. And then this is the air control cabinet that controls all the stuff that has to do with the automatic tool changer. So it just gets air supply in and that's it. That control box will actually be attaching to the side of the mill stand. So it'll be more integrated and I'm going to make this mill somewhat portable when I do that. Well, I'm sure I missed some things. Um, the cabinet's not perfect. It contains most of the chips. It contains most of the coolant. It leaks a little at the door when you open it. Um, you could definitely redo the upper part of the enclosure. Um, but overall, you know, it keeps the mess in, especially while cutting with flood coolant. 
that's the only thing I wish I would have spent a little bit more time on in the stand, but mechanically, uh, the mill works really well. Just uh, to give you an idea, you know, some things that I make on there. I make these brackets. Um, there's these little billet caps that I make on here. And then some other stuff. So, machine does a really good job. It's pretty fast. It's set at a conservative 105 inch per minute uh, rapid or feed speed. You could go a little bit higher, but obviously being a stepper based system, you always want to underrate just so you never have an issue with lost steps, which I've never had a machine or the machine go off track, lose steps uh, or anything while doing a cut job. So if you have any questions, uh, I'll make my contact information available for you, but feel free to ask away in about uh, a week or so. I'll have the machine, just a couple updates that I wanted to do to it, get the control cabinet relocated, get the machine portable and be ready to go to a new home. Thanks for watching. much for that.